Hi guys, uh, my name is Jan Perchek and I'm the mixing engineer for Daniel Wise uh, solo album called Dive and uh, Daniel was kind enough to ask me to walk you through the process of mixing his guitar sound so um, this is our second video um, this is Land of the Dreamers and um, in this video we'll go over some routing and I will show you what plugins I used and um, how I used them and uh, what automation I applied and um, just a few words uh, this is a very very tricky song Land of the Dreamers probably took us the longest to mix because it has so many different vibes and it's very extremely dreamy and um, at the beginning uh, everything happens almost like uh, in a dream so I had to achieve that effect and um, later on there's a, a solo and uh, other parts that required um, separate attention and a lot of automation. So let's just dive right into it. And um, um, so first of all, let me just explain the sound flow. Um, I have um, my guitar sources over here, electric guitar DI. I think we had some kind of problem with the uh, microphone um, uh, channel. So that's why we decided not to use it. So I was actually faced with the decision to use the DI sound here. So I had to reamp it and use various, uh, plugins, uh, as you will see later in the video. So, um, let's just talk about routing really quick so we can understand like what, what sound I'm, I'm uh, using here and I'm doing, uh, analog summing, um, which means I'm sending my stereo pairs to my analog summing box and from analog summing goes into Fusion SSL. Um, uh, and from um, Fusion uh, by SSL, it goes into my AD converter, uh, Apogee converter. And from my Apogee converter, I record it back into Pro Tools th through Speedif. So that's pretty much uh, the sound uh, flow. Um, now, um, the electric guitar channels I'm actually routing to my electric guitar uh, auxiliary as you can see here this is my auxiliary and that goes into the uh, into a stereo uh, pair uh, for analog summing so let's just look at, at, at the mixing process uh, so first of all I um, I look at the individual uh, track in, in this case uh, the DI and uh, let's just go one by one and see what I did here. So this is my uh, console um, uh, soft tip one. It's a uh, SSL emulation, which I really love and I love using um, SSL for guitars. So um, this is pretty much what I did. As you can see, not not a lot of processing, not a lot of heavy processing. I'm removing some of uh, the muddiness from the guitar to DB, very moderate compression. Um, uh, a little bit of a drive here, but uh, really uh, nothing uh, substantial. Um, let's see how it reacts uh, here. Um, and then the next plugin that I have here is actually a guitar rig. Again, since I was um, since I used uh, a, uh, a DI signal, I had to reamp it. And this is my guitar rig. This is what I decided to use. And I actually was going for uh, sort of a um, um, fat sound. Um, I felt like you know DI sound is obviously has its uh, it's a little bit harsh. You know the sound of the guitar um, it came really. Um, straightforward so i had to make it a little bit more round and i decided to use this setting um this is uh whatever you can see on the screen this is pretty much it i think it's like a some sort of a jazz uh preset um uh, and then i tweaked it uh further um so yeah as you can see uh all the stuff that it came with i'm using very little of it but let's just listen to it and see what it does um in the track.
So again, it's uh, I really like Guitar Rig 5, and this is a pretty good emulation of the twang reverb, and uh, I'm using the British um, uh, cabinet here. And you can tweak the mics, uh, you can uh, mute certain mics, or pick whatever mics you want. Usually ribbons are great uh, if you want to make a more round sound. And dynamic microphone gives you more of a definition. So you can play with this um, and, and it's really great. Now, Octoverb and Vintage Verb, all of these, um, I'm using a little bit of those. Um, uh, let's take a look at the next. Um, now, it's important to mention that I actually have here uh, my overdrive um, and that was kind of like the signature sound for the entire album as I mentioned it in the previous video this is what really makes give the um, sound here it's distinct kind of um, I would say character a, a bit of a bark and um, so um, if we listen to it um, without the overdrive uh, you're gonna get a pretty um, a DI uh, sound. So for the overdrive, I'm using my um, old friend uh, Sans Amp. Uh, this is a Plexi setting, and um, I just uh, tweaked it. Uh, further, I added a lot of drive since I'm using it in parallel, um, and all the other things that you could uh, you can actually tweak. Um, it's an amazing plugin. I use it on a lot of things, not just guitars, but in this specific case, that's what I felt um, with the dense instrumentation. That's what uh, Daniel needed to get his sound through. Um, all right, let's look at the next uh, plugin. So. Here I have a um, active equalizer, but this is more of a, um, a dynamic um, multi-band compressor. Um, so uh, what I do is just uh, duck in kind of taming these uh, middle frequencies, which I find a bit harsh for um, for the guitar. And uh, if, let's just listen to what it does. <laughs> So um, it's also important to listen to everything in the context of, of um, the entire song. But as you can see, I'm cutting, um, not cutting, but I'm taming, I'm compressing a lot of uh, mid frequencies and the uh, frequencies that appear to be uh, a little bit on the piercing side, since I wanted the sound to be uh, extremely pleasant for hearing because uh, these are long solos and you don't want to get uh, ear fatigue. I find it extremely useful. Let's look at the next plugin that we're using here. Um, the next plugin again. This is more of um, a very musical um, sort of surgical EQ stuff that I'm using. Uh, this plugin is amazing. It's actually by Fabrice Gabriel, who's also a musician. So this plugin um, is very musical and it's not harsh at all. Well, let's just listen to what this does. So as you can see, I'm shaving off a lot of um, a lot of muddiness here, and uh, probably if you listen to it uh, with the entire song, you, you would hear that it kind of loses its definition because of the bass and the kick. Um, and um, so I'm just um, shaping this kind of curving this guitar sound by uh, reducing uh, the muddiness of it so it kind of stand on its own without um, uh, interfering with the bass and the lows. Um, now the next plugin is actually very important for this sound because, as I mentioned before, this is a very vibey and uh, um, this is a very vibey tune. So um, I'm using this uh, black hole. Um, as I've explained it in the previous video, I used the same thing here. It's an amazing plugin, an amazing um, uh, reverb uh, with an amazing tail that can last forever if you want. Um, as you can see, I'm automating the mix uh, that I'm sending to um, 
the guitar in the size of the reverb. Um, no pre-delay, uh, cutting some lows and cutting some highs just to make it make sure it doesn't um, muddy up my sound. Absolutely no feedback. I um, I don't need um, uh, feedback since you know there's plenty of delays and everything. Uh, resonance, I don't need resonance either. Um, the guitar sounds great if you add resonance to your um, uh, reverb, especially in the insert. You, you may be dealing with a lot of frequencies you don't want to uh, deal with. So let's just listen to it with and without, and we'll see what we, what it does. Yeah, so you, as you can hear, the the tail of the reverb is just uh, amazing, and it really creates this uh, atmosphere. Um, uh, so let's see what we have on the sands here. On the sands, I have uh, a rear bus, which is the parallel bus compression, uh, which is a um, kind of emulation of the quad compressor on the SSL uh, board. Uh, so that's just uh, another parallel compressor, and if you listen to the guitar sound, you will hear So it just adds uh, a little bit more definition and really put things in the guitar a little bit more in the perspective and much closer to you. Um, uh, not drastically, but it creates enough um, sort of closeness, um, uh, which I really like for a, a solo instrument, especially uh, considering it's a solo uh, album. Um, now let's take a look at the, so um, as I mentioned before, my uh, guitar is being routed to the auxiliary electric guitar. Uh, so let's take a, take a look at the overall shaping of the sound um, and see what we have here. Uh, yet another console soft tube SSL emulator. So on the, um, let's see what I have here. Um, again, yeah, I'm cutting a um, pretty significant cut here. Um, I guess I didn't really want all that uh, rumble and, and muddiness of uh, 100 hertz. Um, I'm even cutting more, so I guess I was getting a lot of low end, probably from all the uh, emulations um, and the uh, amp um, emulator. And that's pretty much it. That's all I'm doing here. Um, uh, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, Fairchild. Um, this one, actually, uh, I love using it. It has uh, tons of sour harmonics since it emulates the, the original Fairchild that comes with tons of uh, tubes. So um, I'm using a little bit of compression here. So as you can see, it doesn't really even move the needle. Um, that's kind of how I like it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of very shallow compression, but uh, even if I do compress, it's, it's probably no more than one, uh, the most 2 dB reduction. Um, so yeah, this just makes everything uh, fatter. Uh, let's just hear it with and without. Next to Q, um, again, um, as you can see, I'm just uh, repeating the same steps. I, I'm still not happy with the uh, muddiness here of uh, about 200 hertz. And to be quite honest, uh, most of the guitars that I mix, uh, this is the frequency that has the most problems. Um, so 200 hertz from two to sometimes 260. Um, so you have to be really careful with these frequencies. And again, uh, a little bit uh, around four or five K, which is like where the piercing stuff is happening. So um, I'm kind of gently um, taming these frequencies. I have uh, Eco Boy, and, um, and this is uh, somewhat of um, a dual echo. So quarter note, eighth note, just adds, um, just makes the guitar a little bit more airy and a little bit stereo whiting with all the reflections bouncing and um, that's why I like this um, Eco Boy and again I'm not really doing a lot of it so 
So if you listen to it in the headphones, especially, you can hear the bouncing happening. So the widening is happening and, and, and it uh, creates like a nice uh, wide stereo image. That's why I'm using it. Um, this limiter thing, again, uh, it was just very dense playing. So a lot of stuff is happening and I kind of wanted the guitar to be up front all the time. So I usually don't limit guitars, but in this case, um, you know, I felt like um, this limiter was just like really putting uh, this guitar up front without losing any notes um, that Daniel was playing. So the next one is um, Virtual Tape Machine by uh, Steven Slade, and again, this is uh, like a, a finisher um, that really, you know, makes the sound even a little bit uh, closer and, and fatter overall. So as you can see, there's a lot of baby steps that are happening here. I usually don't achieve things with one plugin, and it's like a multiple um, addition uh, with very subtle and very um, careful um, numbers uh, that r actually create the kind of effect that I want. Um. Um, so the next one uh, I have, and it's probably automated from what I can see, is a Valhalla reverb and here I'm turning it on and off in this case it's off uh, let's maybe go to where it's on yeah so I'm using this um, bright hole and again this this reverb is amazing um, and uh, it really, I'm cutting some uh, highs, I'm cutting a lot of lows again, not to muddy up the sound too much, and uh, pretty long decay, and uh, uh, about 20%. Um, yeah, so I'm just, again, this is just something that adds to the overall um, vibe of the guitar. Now, what do we have on our sends? On our sends, I have a room, um, and that room is um, one of my favorite rooms. is a Spanish uh, DUY uh, plugin company, and I've been using them for a very long time in the typical uh, room settings, um, uh, which gives it uh, some character. And I'll always imagine guitar players kind of recording in, the, in a room for some reason, so I just always turn the room on. Um, and then plate, um, I have, I believe, EMT 140. Um, again, a pretty, uh, pretty long uh, reverberation time, so it's a pretty solid uh, plate here with um, high pass and low pass in the Q section. Um, I cut uh, some lows, again, not to muddy up the sound, I cut some highs um, to make sure it sounds realistic, um, as you can see here. And um, Let's hear what it sounds like with and without. So as, as um, you can hear it, let's just maybe uh, remove all the plugins now that we know um what effect they create um let's just listen to it without and then with um
So that pretty much concludes um, um, the walkthrough. Um, and uh, I hope uh, you got something out of it. And I hope you enjoy this album. Uh, it's a great album. And uh, again, I had uh, a real pleasure mixing it. And I hope you check out on all the platforms. Again, uh, Dive by Daniel Wise. Thank you and have a great day.